This boy, named North, is extraordinary compared to other kids his age. At only 11 years old, he is already everyone in the know worldwide. Everywhere he goes, he is granted special privileges and given a warm welcome. Don't be surprised, as a private limousine always awaits him to pick him up at the airport. When he steps foot in Hawaii, the governor treats him like royalty. On another occasion, when he arrives in China, he is even crowned as the emperor, and thousands of people bow at his feet. However, despite being famous and treated as privileged, something always weighs on North. It turns out he travels around the world in the hope of finding new parents for himself. While his birth parents remain in a coma back home, but what on earth has this kid done that makes everyone fascinated about him? North lives in suburban Connecticut with his parents, who are preoccupied with their routines. His father is a workaholic, while his mother is consumed with shopping. As an 11-year-old prodigy, North has gained a reputation for being the most successful kid in school. He excels academically, with an average score of 91, and he also has a batting average of 402. Surpassing everyone's standards, he is admired by many for his hard work and polite demeanor. Everyone in town idolizes and praises him as if he is the perfect kid for every pair. Despite his fame and success, North constantly feels unloved and undervalued by his parents. During dinner, he attempts to share about his day at school, but his parents' argument completely drowned out his voice, leaving him feeling ignored. This situation causes him to feel neglected, and as a result, he has a panic attack and collapses on the floor. Since that day, North's life has taken a turn for the worse. His academic performance deteriorates, and he struggles to focus on activities involving trauma or sports. He even loses six consecutive games in a baseball game, which has never happened before. When his coach asks for the reason, North confides in him about feeling unappreciated by the people who gave him life. However, the coach doesn't seem to care and fails to understand the importance of what North is saying. Realizing this, North decides to take a break and tells his coach that he needs to work on some things and can't play the game at the moment. While everyone speculates what might be bothering their best player, North leaves the field and heads to his special place. He walks through the old tree forest, alongside beautiful riversides and covered bridges. Instead of stopping at any pleasant place to relax, he walks into a department store and goes straight to a huge armchair. As he lowers his head and sits down with a listless eye, he looks like any other ordinary kid, waiting for his parents to finish their Easter shopping. As North contemplates his life, a man dressed as the Easter Bunny approaches and sits before him. Little does North know this encounter will significantly impact his life. The Bunny inquires about what's troubling North, and despite his initial reluctance, North starts to vent his frustrations. For the first time, someone seems to care about what's happening to him, even if it's just a stranger in a bunny suit. North confides in the bunny about how his parents never appreciate him and neglect him. Bunny suggests that North simply talks to his parents about his feelings. But North feels that if they can appreciate him, they don't deserve him. Upon hearing North's story, the bunny man sympathizes with him and acknowledges that feeling underappreciated is a common issue. He advises North that, unlike in baseball, where he can switch teams if he wants, he is stuck with the parents he has. After the man leaves, North sits alone again, but his conversation with the bunny man has had a profound impact on him. It's like a magical spell has been cast on him, and he suddenly comes up with a plan to solve his problem. The following day, North visits his friend Winchell, who happens to be a school journalist. He tells Winchell that he wants to leave his parents and asks for help in placing an advertisement to find new ones. Without hesitation, Winchell agrees and encourages North, saying that it's a great idea and that there's no turning back. Despite his friend's enthusiasm, North still hesitates. Later, North attempts to reach out to his mother over the phone, but she is preoccupied with shopping and doesn't have time to talk. He then tries to contact his father, but it dismisses him, feeling hurt and abandoned. North decides to go through with his plan to find new parents. Unbeknownst to him, Winchell has already printed the posters and taken action. Played into Winchell, with everything in place, North begins his bold quest to find new parents. The news of his search spreads quickly throughout the town and beyond, even crossing borders. The impact is immediate, as children gain a newfound confidence and approach their parents with a sense of empowerment. As a result, parents start to treat their children with more respect and affection, hoping to prevent them from leaving home. Soon the news reaches his parents. Out of astonishment and terrified, the two poor parents lapse into a coma right away on the spot. No one knows that they won't wake up again, and even when the court date arrives, they remain unconscious. 
North's story has now captured the world's attention, and after much deliberation, the judge decides that parrots who behave like North. North's story continues to gain global attention. A national news channel airs North. North embarks on a world tour to find new parrots. Starting in Texas, he meets with Mr. and Mrs. Tex, who are wealthy owners of a steakhouse chain. The couple invites him to their extravagant mansion and promises to fulfill his every desire. North is impressed by their wealth and luxury lifestyle. During his stay with the Tex family, they throw a musical performance in his honor and serve him a large amount of food, hoping to make him gain weight. However, North realizes that they are trying to replace their deceased son with him, which leaves him feeling empty inside. He wanders alone in a field at sunset and soon encounters a sharpshooting cowboy who looks just like the Easter Bunny Man. The man introduces himself as Gabby and insists that he was never an Easter Bunny. North vents his frustrations to him again, saying that he doesn't want to be a substitute for someone else and can't change who he is just to be loved. After listening to North's problems, Gabby offers him advice once again before walking away. North takes some time to consider everything and then informs the Tex couple of his decision not to continue with them. The couple accepts his decision and expresses gratitude for the opportunity. As North is leaving, Gabby gives him a silver dollar with a bullet through the center as a good luck charm. After the unsuccessful attempt, North resumes his search for his ideal parents and heads to Hawaii, unaware of what is happening back home. There, he is greeted by Governor and Mrs. Ho, who offers him a luxurious life on their private island. North is tempted by their offer and asks them if they have a deceased child whose place he will fill Mrs. Ho tells North that she cannot conceive, making him their first child. Excited, North accepts them as his parents. Meanwhile, North is unaware that Winchell is taking advantage of the situation and starting a rebellion against parents in town. That evening, the Aloha family throws a grand celebration and introduces North to all the residents on the island. North is intrigued by all the wonderful things he sees until the governor reveals a billboard featuring a half-naked photo of him, announcing that it will soon be displayed all over the United States. Upon seeing the billboard, North becomes furious. However, the governor tries to justify it as part of a tourism promotion strategy. Since North's presence in Hawaii is expected to attract tourists from the mainland, the couple attempts to convince North that they're not doing anything wrong and that he's crucial to them. Nevertheless, North eventually realizes that he's just a tool for their success in the family. Desperately, North runs into a man on the beach who resembles the Easter Bunny and Gabby. To his surprise, the man turns out to be a tourist photographer visiting Hawaii. North finds it strange that he can confide in this stranger and pour out all his problems to him whenever he sees him. As though the man were a guardian angel, the two have a conversation and North shares his current situation with the governor's family. The man reminds North that parents should not exploit their children for selfish gain and that he deserves better than this. Although North has been unsuccessful in both Texas and Hawaii, he's not worried because he still has plenty of time until his deadline. While North travels to Alaska, back in his hometown, things are escalating as Winchell's lectures inspire children to rebel against their parents emotionally. Upon arriving in Alaska, North is immediately captivated by the fresh air and breathtaking scenery, as well as the distance from everyone and everything. The Alaskan couple greets him warmly and helps him settle in, assuring him that they don't have any ulterior motives for adopting him and simply want him to pursue his dreams and be happy. Shortly after, the couple introduces North to their elderly father, whom they plan to send out to sea on an ice floe as part of their tradition. The old man is upset, but North tries to make the most of the time they have together and learn from him as they make the journey to the sea. North becomes increasingly disturbed by the impending farewell and is deeply upset when the grandfather is sent away. North runs into the man who looks like the Easter Bunny again and confides in him about his grandfather's fate. The man reminds North that he only has a week left to find new parents, which surprises North since he has only just arrived in Alaska. The man reveals that the journey from his hometown to the ice flows takes seven weeks and North must make a decision quickly. As time rapidly dwindles, North speeds towards an uncertain future, feeling upset that his parents have not called him into months. Little does he know that they are still in a coma and on display at a museum. Meanwhile, North's mission has inspired children all around the world to leave their parents and hire Belle and Winchell, both of whom have become wealthy and influential. North's next family is Amish, but he is immediately turned off by their large family size and lack of modern amenities. While North is not one to make hasty decisions, there are only seven days left in a world full of potential parents to consider. However, his experiences in Zaire, China, and Paris have been equally unsuccessful, with only three days left until his deadline. 
North is feeling the pressure. North arrives in New York City to meet his final set of prospective parents. He meets the Nelson family, who already have two children, and finds that they are the perfect family he has been looking for. During their time together, he realizes that they are everything he has ever wanted. Meanwhile, North's parents awaken from their coma, and Winchell takes them to a room where he records them pleading with North to return home and promising to treat him better. 55 to 38. Later that night, North receives a videotape sent by Winchell. However, after watching the video, he discovers that Winchell has manipulated the words to make it appear that his parents no longer want him. This crushes North's heart, and he eventually decides to stay with the Nelsons. North starts living with his new family, who make him feel wanted and loved. However, he has an intuition that something is still wrong because he misses his biological parents. He decides to leave the Nelsons and bids them farewell in despair. North escapes to New York City to hide from everyone. Winchell and Belts are worried that if North returns to his parents, their profitable business will fail. Therefore, they plan to kill him later. While an assassin pursues North to kill him, he manages to escape and stumbles across an old friend, Adam. Adam informs him about Winchell's actions during his absence and hands him that original video clip of his parents. Moments later, North almost gets hit by the assassin, but he manages to run away and comes across an event where he meets a stand-up comedian who looks like the Easter Bunny. They watch the video clip, and North understands that no one will ever love him as much as his parents do. The man then drives North to the airport to return home. However, at the airport, a group of kids who follow in his footsteps become enraged upon realizing North is returning to his parents. They proceed to attack him. The Easter Bunny returns and invites him to board his van. North recognizes the delivery driver from previous encounters and asks if he is his guardian angel. The man denies meeting North and claims that as a FedEx agent, he resembles a guardian of important items. North is delivered to his house before the deadline, but his parents are not there. Only Winchell awaits him and informs him that his parents are in his favorite spot. As North runs towards his parents, an assassin shows up and pulls the trigger. Suddenly, North awakens in an empty mall, realizing that he has been dreaming all along. The Easter Bunny appears moments later, and North tells him about his dream. The man then drives North home, where his anxious parents happily greet him. It has all been a dream, but North discovers Gabby's silver dollar in his pocket and says that he has always had it for good luck. 